This song, to me, really sings itself. It's so relatable. <laughs> you know, there's so much wrapped up in the song that it feels like it was written yesterday. I, when you first gave it to me, I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> like, I, I, I could be talking to my mom or my grandma or my, my aunt, and they would have a story similar to this, or my little sister. Um, and, you know, the music paired with it, it's just so perfect because it's, simple it's honest you know sort of like the one that got away type thing and you see tropes like that in pop music and, and music that we hear today still um but mr berlin really really does one it tugs at your heartstrings with this one so it was my favorite to prepare you know <laughs> just my treat oh. yeah um this music is like a balm it, it's certainly um something that you 
return to because it's familiar, it's tonal, because sometimes we get very atonal at the Opera House. It's, you know, while it is sad, it's still a relatable trope, you know, like I've had unrequited love, lost loves, you know, and it's very reflective, you know, it's, it's nice to sometimes take time and, and go back to your roots and, you know, um, contemplate. And that's what this music is, reflective, contemplative. And in a lot of ways that can be healing, you know, I think that the healing power of music is serious. And this is one of those songs that like, you really see it exemplified. It's like, oh wow, this person's going through it, but I'm sure they got a little bit of it out with these, with these beautiful lyrics. And again, like, it's written in the 20s, but it could have been written two days ago because, you know, these things still happen. And, and I feel like this is the music that really is what keeps music going within society as well. It's like, you're always going to have these feelings. And there were people with masterful pens <laughs> that really knew how to put their thumb on the heartbeat, and that pulse has not moved since, you know? So I really absolutely enjoy it. I also enjoy serious things, but... I lean a little bit this way because it's more what I grew up with, you know, <laughs> um, being like from a gospel tradition to just like, this is what we do. You know, we sing about how we feel and people have been doing that for years and you'll hear maybe the same 10 songs sung very differently. But when they have that staying power, when they have that, that content, that sustenance is what I like to refer to it as. It's just, it's like eating a good meal. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So I started singing super early on in my life, but I didn't really take it seriously until college. I grew up singing in church choir, and you know, you learn a lot of music really quickly. Um, but you know, at the time, we we're always told, "Oh, like music's not going to pay the bills." You know. <laughs> um, so I'd say in high school, I mean, I was like leading choirs a little bit. That's that's where a lot of my choral experience comes from, and that's why I do all of that so quickly. Um, but in college, I found opera, fell in love with opera and the world of classical music and just how gorgeous all of this music is. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like it's so easy to get caught up in the pop music. And I, I will not say that I don't bump a Beyonce every now and again, but <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, it's a whole new world. It's just so, so large. Uh, and here it just the fact that we had so many ensembles, like I was in the musical theater ensemble, the opera ensemble, and the historical performance ensemble. And all of the music that you all like selected, it was just such a treat. It's like, oh my gosh, I love every score they put in front of me. That's why I'm learning in like three seconds, because I'm like, wow, I would listen to this in my real life. You know? <laughs> and then from there, um, and of course, like I have to give props to Cesar Ulloa, who is my current voice teacher. He has dealt with a whole bunch of mess, because I showed up you know, um, with somewhat of a voice and a dream. <laughs> and he really helped me figure it all out. Uh, and now I work full time in the San Francisco Opera Chorus and I just got tenure. And the music that we're presented with there, you know, like that's harder because in a opera house is like, wow, <laughs> here's all this music. We need to do this. There are certain things that aren't necessarily for enjoyment. But, you know, I sing because it makes me happy. So even if I'm like, oh, okay, I don't really care for this score. Any moment that I feel like I get to sing and I get to perform, it's like, it's sustaining to me. It really feeds my spirit. So I'm so happy that I've met so many people along the way that are so supportive and so happy that I get to do this for a living because it does not feel like work. It just <laughs> feels like, I don't know, the tops, you know? <laughs>